Hey everyone, how's it going? I have a big project coming up here, which is threading some 50HRC4140 tool steel. It's tough stuff, uh, and I want to use a thread mill to do it. So we're going to play around a little bit with Fusion's form tool. We're going to make uh, the thread mill go through some online libraries, and we'll machine the part in the end and see how it comes out, see how she threads on. All right, let's get into it. So this here is the part in question. Um, now this part is just modifying something from the customer. Essentially they had this, uh, this pin already done up and they want me to shorten it and put a thread on it. So I'm only gonna be modifying this end here. Uh, this, this was given to me as a STP file, so I was able to just import it. Um, so I don't really have anything going on in the model here. So I'll jump over into cam. So if we open up the setup, I always set my stock to the top and the center of any round parts. It just makes it easy to probe, easy to find the center, whether, whether you're doing a four point probe or whether you're finding the center with a dial indicator. It's, uh, it's just a nice simple way. What I've done is just a simple fixed size cylinder for my stock. All I'm doing is taking off this step right here. So I've created a fixed size cylinder, same size as the outer diameter of my stock, and it just goes up to the top. First thing I want to do is take down this step. So I'm using a 2D adaptive. I'm using one of my go-to tools. It's a... Uh, ALTIN coated 5 8 flat end mill. Um, these things are pretty fantastic. I get them from Gar. There's a local supplier here um, through Thomas Skinner in Vancouver, if you guys are looking up there. Uh, when we get into the machining, I'm also going to show them. I'm, I'm going to be using a bit of an air blast coolant, but uh, I'm not going to be using any flood. Uh, and I'm going to turn my mist rate off. It just helps the, the shocking of the tool when it's actually cutting. All I've done for the pocket selection is selected my inner contour here. You can see I select the contour. Uh, since my stock is set up to be that material, it's already taking off the perfect amount. If it wasn't set up, I could go and select contours and make my contour that outer diameter. Has the exact same effect. Um, what I'm doing since I selected this upper contour here, I, I often like selecting the upper contour. It's simply easier to see uh, when I'm going through selections, but you have to remember your bottom height here needs to be selected as well. So go in, um, it's no longer model bottom selection collected here, and then simply select the face that I want it to come down to. Now I do a really light cut on these. It's only a 20 thou step over. Uh, really reduces tool pressure. Uh, any deflection that's happening, but it's uh, it's my go-to for 5 8 tool. I'm not too, too concerned, but uh, depending on how we actually hold this thing, uh, my idea right now is in a vise mounted to the, to the table, just a, a four jaw vise that I, I use on my tool table. But uh, we'll see whatever we can get kind of the most rigid setup with. And finally, lead in, all I do is expand my horizontal lead in. This is something I always do just to give it a nice easy entrance point. Um, I, I just give it a huge, huge horizontal radius. Uh, and usually I cut down the vertical. It really, it's it's not a big deal here. All I'm doing is trying to uh, to make it an easier cut on the cutter and the part. Now that we have that much hogged out, we have to make the threads. So the thread I need to make here is a 9 16 20 thread. Um, and I'm gonna be using a, a form end mill that I've, I've loaded up. So see, I've gone ahead and done this all already, but uh, let's, let's take a step back. Um, and we are going to to actually load up this end mill. So in case you don't know, Fusion brought this out a little while ago, making formed end mills. It's, it's very, very handy. And um, if you actually go on to, this tool is a, is a Harvey tool that I bought. Um, part number 933160-C6, made for hardened steels. 
Um, this is going to be the first time I'm cutting with it, so uh, we're going to find out how well it works. But if you download their simulation file here, it can actually import. It gives you the exact um, DXF outline, which we can open up, which is what I've used to import here. There you can see. So it gives you the exact outline of the tool that you want to uh, that you that you've downloaded. Insanely helpful because when we go up here into manage, we're gonna make a new form mill, tool profile, boom, tool axis. That's the center axis of your tool right down the center. So you click it. You can't really see what it's selected, but it has selected a sketch segment. So we're good there. Compensation point now. That is the point that the tool uses as the most outer diameter. If I zoom in right here, this tool has a slight flat, so I'm just going to select that point right there on the bottom, and it's going to give me the outermost diameter that this uh, that this program uses to make the form cutter. Press OK. Nothing seems to happen, but that's all right. If I go into my tool library. You can see it was made right there, 0.34 mil. One thing I have noticed, um, they've updated a lot of their, their little nuances, but it doesn't let you select what cutter it is, what, um, what pocket you've put it in. So, there we go. So if we hop into under your documents, this is my document right here. Right click on the tool and edit tool. You can hop over to your post processor and give it a tool number. For me, it's going to be 40. That's the next available tool. I have a manual tool change, no automatic tool change for me. And you can set all your settings in here. So for this guy here, Harvey has all of your speeds and feeds loaded up into this beautiful document. Um, you go through this equation here. You can calculate uh, inch per minute as well as your, this is their example tool, but it gives you uh, your linear feed. And you can just easier look down here what your inch per tooth is, as well as your SFM, depending on what hardness you're cutting. So for me, it ends up being 3000 RPM, three inch per minute, uh, my ramp, I'm going to leave it three. It gives me a one thou per tooth. I generally plunge around 15. All right. Load it up now in my cam library for this part. Uh, right now, this form tool is only in this specific part. If you want to pull it into the rest of your library, you have to go in here. You have to copy the tool. And then this is my cloud library where I have all the rest of my tools. So now you can you can paste this in here. Paste tool and boom. There it is down at the bottom. So now I have it for other projects as well. Okay, let's walk through how I've done this step here. Uh, step one, checking my speeds and feeds. 1655, three inch per minute exactly what uh, what Harvey's website has told me to do. I can't argue with that. Uh, once again, you're going and you're selecting the tool that you want. Easily done. Circular face sections. This is the diameter, the major diameter. Now, I want to be specific here because when you make a, a thread with a, th with a single point threading tool, you need to model the major diameter. That's important, you don't want to model the minor. And, um, you know what, I could be wrong, we'll come back to that. I always model the major diameter, and then I cut into the, to the root diameter, the minor diameter. So, my selection here, major diameter right there. We're gonna step over. Uh, one thing I've done is kept the bottom height up slightly. I don't want the tool crashing into this face at the bottom, uh, you're gonna break your tool pretty much straightforward you may be lucky but you know what keep it off if you can do it much better if you don't have a step there then you just make that to uh, to whatever you want your thread to come down to uh, if your drawing has a spec go from top height say it's uh, say it's a one inch thread come down one inch easy as that I am oops 
I am going back to whole bottom coming up 30 thou. There we go. All right, thread pitch. This is a 9 16 20. So I'm going to go into my calculator, my spotlight here. 20 threads per inch. So I'm going to go 1 over 20, and that gives me 50 thou as far as threads per inch goes. So my thread pitch is 50 thou. That's uh, 20 threads per inch. It's a right-handed thread that I need. Uh, I also need these in left-handed. So if you look just to my tree here, I have one that's labeled RH for right hand, one that's labeled LH for left hand. Uh, I have a few of these parts to do, half are right, half are left. So all I did was I made the first half. I duplicated that, go click on it, come here, control D makes a duplicate. I go into it and change that to a left-handed thread. Done, it's that simple. Pitch diameter offset. This is what gives you uh, your how, how far it needs to go in. This is what you need to get to your root diameter. So uh, I went into Machinist Handbook, found out the root diameter was not doing good at math in my head right here, but I needed to come in uh, 60 thou on 9 16 major diameter. So on the diameter, come in 60 and a half thousandths, and uh, that's, that's what you need. <laughs> it's that simple, just go through the, uh, go through the machinist handbook. It really is the Bible of, of machining. Uh, this is a single thread, I don't need multiple threads. If you had a two start thread, you could also select that here, no problem. Multiple passes, since I am machining 50 Rockwell C, HRC, I'm gonna do this in multiple passes. Now I'm lucky, Harvey has this, uh, this guide tells me that I need three to four depths of cut to get through this. This is their recommendation, so you know what? I'm doing four. And four at 10 thousandths of a step over. Now I'm leaving a little bit because I have essentially 30, 30 thousandths to step over. Half of what my pitch diameter is, is, is the radial step over is 30 thousandths. At 10 thousandths and four step, I'm stepping over 40 thou, but it gives me one kind of skim pass right at the very start just to, just to see and make sure everything is going okay. And that's it. Uh, I increased the horizontal lead in lead out radius again, just to give it a nice smooth transition at the, at the start and at the end. And we're good. We've generated our path. Yeah, I'm just going to turn off this sketch for the tool because we don't need that anymore. All right, and then the only final thing I'm doing is grabbing a contour and just wrapping it around the thread once it's made to clean it up. My casual, my usual contour program here, it's my 3 8 45 degree contour. I run at 2500 RPM, 20 inches a minute. Contour selection. Now I don't do this, so Fusion has a 2D chamfer. I never do it this way. I always do it as a 2D contour. I, I simply like this more. It feels like I have a bit more control over the actual contour, um, and it's just become a habit for me. So do it, don't do it, completely up to you. I'm not gonna tell you one way, but this works very well for me. So select the contour that you want to trace around. Heights I don't touch, everything is just left. Come down to the bottom here, and chamfer is what I wanna do. I want to make a 70 thou chamfer, just a nice fat chamfer, easy for the, for the nut to eventually go on there. And chamfer tip offset, I always bring it down about 50 thou, it just gives me, the, the wider the cut you can get, the more uh, surface feet a minute you're actually getting in your cut, uh, because you're up at the wider part of your, of your flutes. Uh, so raise it as far as you can go, we'll see in the, in the simulation here at the end that uh, it's about halfway up. Sorry, the last thing I do here is I do a finish overlap of about 100 thou as well, depending on the diameter of the piece, of course, but it just gets rid of any kind of entrance exit marks that you might have from, from the process. And then finally, I increase my horizontal lead-in radius. Again, just nice, easy pressure on the tool. All right, piece is all done. Let's uh, take it off the chuck and see how she threads on.
That is silky smooth. Silky, silky smooth threads. Very happy with that. So let's run through a little bit of a recap on how that project went. A um, few things that I definitely learned and some things that uh, could be better for next time. Let's start with fixture holding. I was quite happy with the four jaw chuck. It held everything uh, repeatable even though I did find the center of every one with the probe. It was, I'll say within a couple thousandths. The problem with the four jaw chuck is when you loosen two of the jaws to take your piece out, put the next one in, you, you get a little bit of movement. Um, I'd love, if I was doing more of these, if I was doing quantities of, you know, say 20 or more, I'd probably get a collet set up, a little 5C collet, hold it in the chuck, it'd be a lot more repeatable. So, very nice thing. My height, however, was set amazingly. It helped, kept repeatable to within about 5 tenths every single time, so very, very happy with that. First time using the form mill, uh, sorry, using the thread mill. Very, very pleased with the results. Um, in Fusion, we set the diameter offset to be what, what the calculations essentially told me. But what I measured with the thread pins at the end, um, I, was, I was about five, five and a half thou oversized from the fit that I wanted, which is a, it's a 2A thread fit. Um, so, not a problem. Go back in Fusion, drop the diameter offset in the, in the tab down five thousandths, and I was spot on. Uh, every part after that, again, I set the kept that setting the same, and they were all spot on. They all threaded great. Uh, the very nice thing about doing the thread mill is you can get that thread just spot on. It's exactly whatever you need it to be. You want a tight thread, you can tighten it right up with a little bit of practice, of course. Um, the left-hand threading was very easy to do. Again, just flick that switch, left hand threading turned out spot on. No issues at all with that. I will say one of the big downsides of doing the single point thread mill is the length of time. Uh, originally I had it cutting at three inches per minute, which was, it was about three tenths of a thou per tooth, which was the lower end of the recommended settings from the Harvey online calculator. I did up that to in the middle, which is 7.8 tenths per tooth, um, and it, it decreased my limit by about half, so that's, that's about six inches per minute. It made a really big difference as far as the cutting went, so um, no drop in quality of the thread, still very nice and smooth, um, and helped. I did have seven of these to do, so not a huge run, but it helped out a little bit for sure. The final thing I'm going to say, I mean, machining 50 HRC material, not easy, but man, does it leave a nice finish. I do, it's a love-hate relationship I have with hardened steel. I love machining it for the finish. I hate machining it for the tool wear. It's tough on the tools. My, the ALTIN coated end mills are pretty much the best thing, doing everything dry, just with an air blast, and just a really shallow step over. Um, keep the chips down, keep that step over down, and it really helps everything last a bit longer. Well, I hope this helps somebody out there. If it helps anyone, I'm quite happy. Um, anyways, it was a good learning for me, and that's really what it's all about. So, I will see you guys soon. Have a good one.